Hey guys, welcome or welcome back. Thanks so much for joining me. Today is part two of our keyboard shortcut masterclass to make us much more efficient, save time and therefore money in Photoshop. Sorry if you haven't already, you definitely want to have watched the first round of keyboard shortcuts, which covered, I think, like 18 different keyboard shortcuts that I use pretty much every single day, and it essentially will speed up your editing workflow. If you speed up your editing workflow, you are therefore saving time, and if you save time, you tend to save money. It pays to be more efficient as a photographer. So go ahead and learn those ones, come back and learn these ones. You don't really have to learn them in any particular order, but today's video is gonna have another, I don't know, over 15 probably keyboard shortcuts that I find uh, essential to, to basically everyday life in Photoshop. If you haven't already, please do make sure that you press the subscribe button and hit the bell icon. The bell icon will help you out because it'll give you a notification every single time I upload a video. I upload every week and sometimes more than that if I feel like it and if I have time. Just like last time, we've got this camera which is filming from the sky and we also have this camera which is filming me. What we've got open on the screen at the moment is uh, just an image that I've already edited, already worked on, already printed, is already done, but I want to run through today's keyboard shortcuts on this to give you guys just like a flavor of something a little bit different. Do Okay, so bear with. So today's keyboard shortcuts are kind of uh, like a different kind of type than the previous ones, but I want to cover them kind of in little groups because I think that they work quite well together. So let's start by going ahead and creating a new layer. To create a new layer, you can just do Command Shift N. Command Shift N will bring up your new layer dialog box. And if you just want a boring blank layer, then you can go ahead and click OK or Enter. So that's like a nice quick way of creating a new layer. Now, with this blank layer, let's say I'm wanting to go ahead and uh, introduce some color that is already in the image. Well, what I can do is actually go ahead and press I, as in the letter I for igloo, I. By pressing I, what we can go ahead and do is use this little eyedropper which has popped up on the screen. Now, with that in play, we can then go ahead and select a color from the scene by just clicking. And that little click that we just did there has set that color as our top color here. So let's go ahead and utilize that on this file, on this blank layer that we've just created. If all of this is completely foreign to you, two places to go. Number one, we've got Photoshop for Beginners course, which will make following any of my online videos super easy. I will go ahead and link that above. The second place to go if you are finding this a little bit overwhelming is that there is a video on the channel which covers um, kind of Photoshop foundations, like the basics of it, the main three things, and that will kind of introduce you to the concept, but the course is obviously a lot more in depth. So let's go back to doing this. So we've got our layer, we've got our color. We did our keyboard shortcut for brush last time, which was to press the B. I just realized like my nails are pretty gross. Got our keyboard shortcuts for the brushes, which we've done before. So we can go ahead and change the size of that. I'm gonna go super big. And then we also have our keyboard shortcuts for opacity and flow, which are our numbers, if you remember. So we can change our values along there. Let's go ahead and go 100. This is a blank layer. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to go ahead. I mean, I don't really know why I'm doing this, but I'm just gonna go ahead and introduce the color that we selected. So the color we picked off of here and it just introduced that down here. Now with that down there, do you know what? Screw it, let's go all the way around the edge and do a vignette. So we put that all the way around the edge of this layer. Remembering our keyboard shortcuts from last time, we can go ahead and just view this particular layer. So I can go and fill in any areas that I'm not happy with. Okay, so let's go ahead and view that again. Now this looks ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous, but that's okay. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and create a mask on that layer. And then when we're on our mask, we can go through our other keyboard shortcuts. So what I want to go ahead and do essentially is take off this um, effect from the floor, okay? So I'm gonna need my brush again. Now, let's say for example, our palette had different colors on it. We can go ahead and get back to our default colors by pressing D, D for default. Pressing D for default switches our palette back to black and white. And then if you've watched any of my tutorials, you'll know that X will flip those around. So X, 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 X. So we can go ahead and grab our mask, put that back to default, switch the palette if we want to. And knowing our mask knowledge from Photoshop Basics, 
we can go ahead and utilize those other keyboard shortcuts. Now, what happens if I go like that? Like, oops, I went too high. Remember? Okay, so I went too high there. If I wanted to clean that up, that's 100% doable. But doing it like this, I can kind of like can't see. So we utilize another keyboard, a shortcut, where we use our kind of backward slash. They're not forward slash, it's like backward backward slash. The backward slash there, what that does is it will bring up a red overlay and when we're using that we can go ahead and get a neater finish. So switching our palette by using X, you can go from that. But do you see how I'm still not, I'm like not doing a very good job of keeping it straight? But mainly because I'm not very good at doing that. But it's another keyboard shortcut for that. So what you can do is go ahead, if you want to get an exactly horizontal line, is hold down shift on the keyboard before you click and press and go across. And what that gives us is a perfectly straight line. So it doesn't matter where I go, it only goes on that line. Does that make sense? So I'm holding shift and we're getting that a nice straight line. So then if I let go, go ahead and press my back, uh, backwards slash, forward slash, backwards slash, backwards, the other one, okay? When I've done that, I can then go ahead and just basically see that this is only acting above that line that I did down there. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and change the blend mode of this over to something like uh, soft light, I think, and then we'll bring the opacity right down on that so that that is only operating up there on the background. Okay, so we've got that all said and done. Let's go ahead and look at some other ones. So let's say, for example, we were zooming in on Lucky here and we needed to work on something. So we're, we're, we're looking at him. This is Lucky, hi Lucky. Um, and we needed to get back to our kind of like wider view. You just press Command and O together. So Command O, we'll set that back to fit the screen. And if we wanted to view this at 100% resolution, it's Command 1. So Command 1 will bring that in to 100% of that resolution there. What I'm wanting to do now is go ahead and use a different keyboard shortcut to just organize my layer stack a little bit more. As you can see, you can, you can tell essentially that I'm utilizing different things like groups and stuff. And what I wanna do is kind of group all of these layers together. So I don't wanna merge them, I just wanna group them. So to do that, I just need to select one from one end, hold down shift, select one from the other end. You could go anywhere in between. I'm just going for all of them. And then I'm gonna use a keyboard shortcut to group, which is Command G. Command G will go ahead and group those objects together in a group to undo that, it's Command Shift G. You should be able to see a pattern kind of forming in terms of these keyboard shortcuts. And that if one thing does one thing, if you add Shift to it, it tends to kind of undo it. Um, but yeah, so that's just like a useful little thing to have. Now let's say, for example, that I wanna almost flatten this off, but I wanna retain my layers. So to do that, I want to be going ahead and doing a command shift option E. So command shift option E will flatten that group, give us a new one, and then this essentially we can work from as its own layer, which can be really, really useful. Let's undo that. And then let's say, for example, that you just want to merge that down. Command E will just merge those all down. Any selected layers will be merged down into one layer. Let's say, for example, let's ungroup that using our keyboard shortcuts. One of these groups is turned off, so that is invisible. Everything else is visible. Let's say, for example, we wanted to merge all visible layers. That's Command Shift E. Command Shift E will flatten all visible layers, but leave anything that is invisible. Super useful to just quickly get through things and yeah, speed up your life. So let's go ahead and just kind of do one of those here. So let's do Command Option E and just get that right nice and flat there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just group up those bottom ones here. I wanna duplicate this layer duplication as you guys hopefully will already know from watching our videos is Command J. Command J will duplicate your layer exactly as it is. Remember that if you're adding a clipping mask to something, for example, let's do a curves adjustment layer. We're gonna go ahead and lift that up here. And let's say we just want this to operate on this layer. All we need to do is go ahead and hold down Option on the keyboard and click between those two layers. That gives you a clipping mask that only means that basically this is only operating on the layer that's immediately below it, not anything else. So what that means is that I can add a mask to this. Let's do a select subject, just super quick. And let's go ahead and just add that mask here. And so now what this curves layer is doing, this curves layer is brightening and it is brightening just what is white in this 
image here. So on that layer, the white part is literally just the horse. Okay, so what it's doing is it's only saying, hey, look, only affect what is on that layer, not what's underneath it. If that did not have the clipping mask on it, it would lighten up everything, right? Do you see the difference there? So that is how we can go ahead and do that using our keyboard shortcuts. Okay, so if we're happy with how things are looking and we're happy with how everything's turning out, let's go ahead and just kind of flatten off the whole image. Let's do a Command E, merge it all down into one layer. Let's do a final set of keyboard shortcuts that I want to share with you guys, which are to do with cropping. So your cropping keyboard shortcuts actually can be really useful. So let's say that the client wanted this image uh, printed up as a five by seven for example. So if we go ahead and grab our crop tool, you could press C to get there quickly. And we can go up here into ratio and change that to five, seven. Now, when you do this, it will flip portrait, right? So do you see that that is now portrait, which is like, we don't really want that to be portrait. If we want to switch that, instead of going up here and pressing this to rotate it, we just press X on the keyboard and just like flipping our palette, it flips our crop. So or do that. Now, but then we're still here and we're still having to go pull it in out, pull it out, pull it out to get it there. I don't really want to be doing that. The quickest way of doing this is to hold down option as you pull one of the sides and it will pull from all sides. You see how all sides are coming out? Another massive time saver. So we can go ahead and find our crop here, cycle through your overlays by pressing O. So we can go back to rule of thirds, make sure that we've got a pleasing crop for the composition here, and then we can press enter to lock that in. When you're done with that, it's time to export. Easiest way I find to export in the newest version of Adobe Photoshop 2021, which has got some saving annoying things is actually to do a command option shift W, which seems really confusing, but honestly, it, it's not that bad. So we want to do a uh, shift a command option and a W. Now my finger can't reach, so I use that one. And that takes us to export as, and then we can go ahead and save that out as a file for whatever use you have in mind really there. Just remember when you're doing this to always embed the color profile because it is important when you are exporting and uploading to various different things, including your print house. If this video has been helpful for you, please do let me know down in the bottom below the boxy thing, the box down below. And yeah, um, I'll see you all again really, really soon.